Well, good morning, everyone. It is time for Sunday School Highlights, and we're glad you joined us today. We are in our regular court list today, and today is October the 24th. October is almost gone. In fact, next Sunday will be the last of it. Um, our lesson today is Confidence in the, fe in the Face of Fear, and it's on page 92. If you do have a book, you don't have to have a book, and uh, I don't... I don't do every word in the book. It is Sunday School Highlights. Uh, some of the things we just sort of paraphrase and some of the things we read, but it, um, it's just Sunday School Highlights. This is the book that we're in. You can get these for, through Lifeway, or you can also get them on Amazon. Bible Studies for Life. It's the King James Version. It's the book we use in our church, and um, it's the book that I use for Sunday School Highlights. Confidence in the face of fear. We all have fears. We all have problems. Sometimes that just seem insurmountable. The point of today is trust God when you are overwhelmed by fear. Genesis 12, 10 through 13, 17 through 20, and 13, 1 through 4. The Bible meets life. Fear, whether we want to admit it or not, fear is something we all have to wrestle with. Some people are afraid of uh, stepping under a ladder or fear of a spider or fear of getting sick and um, battling a disease, fear of losing your job, fear of being alone, fear of death or being completely uh, certain that, th that this will happen, uh, it, something will happen and you will die. While some fears may seem small and fears can have crippling effects, our minds and our bodies can seize up becoming uh, almost paralyzed. For some, just thinking about it, like imagining that a spider would be crawling on your skin, this would make you scared. And you can feel that fear just by thinking of whatever it is you're afraid of. What do you, what do, you do when you are, um, when the ugly little head of fear begins to creep into our lives? What do you do? An example from Abram's life shows us what we should do. And what we shouldn't do. Genesis twelve ten through 13. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down unto Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say, this is, this is his wife, and they will kill me, and they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall liveth because of thee. So Abram had asked Sarah, he says, you're a beautiful woman. When we get into Egypt, which was customary then, they will see you and they'll want you to be their wife. So let's just say you're my sister. This was a lie. A great famine swept across the land of Canaan. God had called Abram to Canaan and made a covenant with him to provide land and offspring. Because the famine was so severe, however, fear kicked in and Abram chose to take his family to Egypt. Some would say Abram's survival instincts may have led him to do that. He thought um, he was being wise, but let's call it what it was. It was fear. Since God had called Abram to Canaan, surely God would take care of him in Canaan. But fear and uncertainty let certainty led Abram to resettle his family in Egypt. As Abram approached Egypt, he, his mind began to zero in on his fear. He began to envision the circumstances that potentially awaited him and his family in Egypt. They would consider sojourners or foreigners uh, with no rights or protection. Abram had fled the famine in fear, but he seemed to have traded that apprehension for the fear of being oppressed by the Egyptians. That fear led him uh, to respond irrationally. That should not surprise us since fear has the ability to reduce our, second ju our sound judgment and logical reasoning because fear is relentless. It is the power over us. It can cause us to act erratically. We see this on display as we see Abram's fear, <clears throat> inducing him to hand over his beautiful wife. 
Sarah to the Egyptians, Pharaoh, so that he, his own life would be spared. We might think Abram was being totally irrational in passing off Sarah as his sister and not his wife, but perhaps it was the line it was in line with the cultural thinking of the time. Abram may have truly thought he was protecting his own life and doing the right thing, even though this was a lie. So here we have Abram. He was afraid of the famine that God was not going to protect him and his family. So he went and fled to Egypt, and then he became afraid. You know, when I get there, they're going to take Sarah as theirs, and they are going to kill me. So he came up with this proposal that they should say that she was his sister. It says here that um, the author goes into detail here about a story when he was learning how to swim, and he was so scared, and his father kept telling him, don't worry about the water. Don't worry about your surroundings. Focus your eyes on me. Focus your eyes on me. And the author says he learned how to swim, but he also learned that when fear is around and there's nothing we feel like we can do, we need to focus on our father. The less we focus on our fear, the better. And he was speaking then of our heavenly father. Uh, it says, Peter... Well, let me go back. So the Apostle Peter modeled this principle. He and the other disciples were in a boat when a storm came up and began to toss the ship to and fro. We all have heard this story. And they were afraid that they were going to surely die. And they looked out on the water and they saw Jesus walking on the water. And Peter asked them, could he come to him? He had that much faith and that much confidence. He said, can I come out to you? And Jesus called him out. Peter came out and he did fine as long as he was focused on Jesus. But when he took his eye off Jesus, he quickly began to sink in the waves. And that's the same way, that's a, a metaphor for a Christian's life. A lot of times we can do well in the, in the storms of life as long as we focus on the Lord, on Jesus. Fear and uncertainty strikes at all of us. In those moments, we need to remember what Abram seemed to forget, God is with us and he will take care of us always. In those moments, we must take our attention off of the fear and focus instead on the Father. Let me state it another way. Turn your worry into worship. Reasons to fear will always be around, but we have to find, we have to we have far more reasons to worship God than we do to, to focus on the fear. When we change our worry to worship and carry, out, carry our fear to the Father, our perspectives become clearer and will avoid an unnecessary journey to Egypt, just like Abram did. So, Genesis twelve seventeen through 20. What are some situations that can cause us to fear instead of trusting God? Let's see what Genesis 12, 17 through 20 says. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh in his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saith thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to, my, to me, to wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. So it doesn't go into detail about what the plagues were, but they were powerful enough that Pharaoh knew what was going on. It says, um, when Abram arrived in Egypt, uh, the beauty of his wife Sarah captured the attention of the palace officials and they told Pharaoh there's a beautiful woman in the land and Pharaoh said bring her to me he wasn't going to pass up the opportunity and he says imagine what Sarah must have been feeling in that moment the, the text the Bible does not is silent regarding any response from Sarah but she surely must have felt betrayed by her husband and confused and hurt and she must have had fear were probably uh, not far off from her. She likely questioned any confidence she had in God's promise to Abram at that point. 
Zabron's fear induced lies also impacted Pharaoh and his entire household. Innocent people who had no idea what was going on was affected as the as the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. Scripture does not reveal the specifics of the plagues, but they were intense enough that Pharaoh looked around to see what was going on. He figured out what it was. Abram might have been a, a, a great influence among the Egyptians, pointing them from away from their idol, idols and towards the one true God. But, the opportunity for Abram to exercise any leadership was being de demantled by his fear and his lack of his faith. The level of our fear and faith today can have a ripple effect on others, uh, either for good or for bad. Fear and faith are both highly contagious. When chaos and trouble strikes or when we have the opportunity to, to lead or influence others, we should consider how our attitudes and our actions will impact them. Am I spreading fear or encouraging faith? Sometimes we don't see or we may not even think that what we do affects anybody. It's just me. I'll make my own decisions. I'll do what I want to do. It's my business. Well, sometimes our business ripples into other people's business. And our actions will cause problems for other people. So we have to always consider that. Uh, am I spreading fear or am I encouraging faith? How does the enemy use fear to uh, to wreak havoc on our lives? Genesis 13, 1 through 4. And Abram went into uh, and went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all he had had, and Lot with him and to the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel and to the place where he had, had his tent and had been at the beginning between Bethel and, and Haya and to the place of the altar which he had make there at the first and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. What do we see happening here? Abram strayed from the will of God and he had to go back to his altar. Sometimes we have to go back to the altar, don't we? Sometimes we have to go daily. Sometimes we can go a few days, but we always have to go back to that altar and renew our faith and our confidence in God and let God know we did wrong and we're back on track and we're back in faith. And thank God for his mercy and his grace. After Pharaoh gave his orders to leave and get out of Egypt, Abram took Sarah, his family, and all he possessed, and he started the journey back into Canaan. When Abram heard the words from Pharaoh to go, he might have recalled God's promise when he said to him, Get thee out of thy country, Genesis 12, 1. Abram seemed to forget God's promise when he felt threatened. But that truth, uh, but, but that's true for most of us. We quickly forget or doubt God's promise and call on, call it on our lives in fearful circumstances. How many times do we do just what Abram done? Something comes up, it's fearful, we don't understand it, we don't uh, necessarily know why, and we flee. We flee to Egypt, just like Abram did. We go in the opposite direction of where God wants us to be, just because we have fear. And then we forget all the wonderful times and all the blessings that he has given us. After we fail, it can be so easy to wallow in our failure. Here's the turnaround. Here's the, the point where we failed, but we have a merciful God. After we fail, it is so easy to wallow in our failure and to stop moving and allowing God to move in us. Abram did not stop, nor did he leave his faith in Egypt. He moved back to where he came from, the place where he knew and worshiped God. The enemy loves to grab a shovel and bury us with the, with the guilt of our past failures. How many times do you feel like you've been buried with the guilt of your past failures? It just won't leave you alone. You will not let it go. You let it stop you from doing things in the future. You let it stop you from moving forward. Uh, 
It says we must keep on moving so the dirt of the guilt doesn't cover us and we must keep moving toward the one who loves us um, the one who loves us even ever in faithful and is ever faithful to us. We must return to Christ remembering this wonderful truth. There is therefore no, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Romans 8 1. Abram went back to where he first built his altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Perhaps Abram retracted his steps back to that place to show humility, to express remorse for his misconduct, to renew his alliance, to remind himself of the original promise, to show his gratitude for God, for God's mercy, or his combination of all these things. The important thing is that he understood who he was and who God is. Abram's act of worship reflects his recognition of the incredible mercy God granted to him instead of the incredible judgment he could have received. While he recognized that fear reduces our faith and confidence um, in the Lord, one form of fear actually strengthens our faith in his and his fear we must increase, not decrease in our lives. A healthy, reverent fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is strong uh, confidence, and it increases our confidence. Proverbs fourteen twenty six. The more we deepen our reverent fear of God, the more our faith and trust in his mercy grows. As we truly understand the depth of God's magnificent power and holiness, the more confident we become and we are overwhelmed by the heights of his undeserving mercy that, we, that he offers to all. So we have to have a healthy fear of God. We have to fear his judgment. We have to fear the fact that he offers us mercy and grace because he wants to. Uh, Abram deserved judgment just like we deserve judgment, but God gave him mercy and grace. He did not deserve those things. He strayed from God. But Abraham went back to his altar, back to that altar, to renew his faith, to renew his confidence, to renew his determined ability to do what God asked him to do. We all have to go back to our altar from time to time. Live it out. We are to trust God when we are overwhelmed with fear. Reflect. Be honest. Take some time and ask yourself, how your level of faith and level of fear have been affecting you and those around you. So be honest. Determine, am I letting fear or my uh, fear show in my life or am I letting faith show in my life? Confess. Take a quick break and self-evaluate if there are any half-truths that you may have covered up in due to fear. Confess it today. Half-truths are the same as whole lies. Uh, so don't let things like that cover up so you cannot fully worship and fully serve God. Worship. Search for a list of different names of God that are found in the scriptures. Take some time and can contemplate on each title. Allow each name of God to deepen your understanding and fear of him while at the same time increase your faith in his mercy. So here we see where Abram was a man of God and he had went and he had trusted and believed in God but he strayed. He went back on God. He done things that weren't according to God's will. But he came back. He came back to the altar. And then he didn't let those things dictate his future. He didn't let those things direct his future. He kept moving, kept going forward. And uh, we can't, when we do wrong, or we fall out of the will of God, we can't let that be our guiding force or we can't keep bringing that up in our lives. We have to take it as a lesson, take it as an experience and move forward, move on. Keep moving forward in the promise of God. That's our story or our lesson today, folks. And uh, it was a good one and I hope you enjoyed it. And I just thank you for being with us. And as we always say, we always mean it. Y'all pray for us and we'll pray for you. Thank you and have a great day today. Bye.